Dr. Tufton, let me turn then to the issue of testing, because one of the other emerging concerns it relates to testing and just how much or how many people would have been testing. Is it a part of the health ministry's consideration to, in your daily release in respect of the new cases, say exactly how many people have been tested? I don't have a difficulty doing that. Um, it's, I don't think that should be a secret. We're, we're committed to transparency. But let me just say something on testing, because there's a, there's a feature of this crisis that I think is characterized by panic response. And we have to be careful that we don't get caught up into the panic response and not focus in a more methodical way on what we're doing and why we're doing what we're doing to get the particular results. Testing is a classic case when you look at countries around the world of a panic response to the crisis. There are countries that are buying five tests per citizen, um, which... To my mind, and I have no right to, to, to dictate how countries operate, it, it really doesn't make much sense. There are countries that are buying test kits that are 60% accurate, raising the possibility of false negatives and false positives because everybody is offering a test. We have not taken that approach. The, the, approach, the approach to managing the process as it relates to tests lies in the numbers of tests as it does in the methodology of testing and nobody comments on the methodology. Most people just comment on how many tests you're doing. We have uh, three approaches to testing. One is to test the vulnerable groups, and we can define those. Of course, it starts with a positive case and the contact tracing around that, but it also involves health workers who are on the front line who are tested routinely. Um, in addition to that, we test uh, as a routine, all upper respiratory, severe upper respiratory cases that turn up at hospital that have no relationship, no link at all to a positive case. So once you come into the, as a matter of fact, not even severe because we're now testing persons, once you get into the health center or the A&E and you have an upper respiratory Ill, ailment, they collect a sample and they test. Now, this is a control group because what, what would certainly happen if you had a spread of the virus throughout the country, it would turn up somewhere in a public health or in a health system. And we routinely do that, and the results are showing that we do not have positive cases in that control group. Um, in other words, while I do agree that we must expand the testing because it's a phase approach, and we are going to be expanding the testing, and we have been, over the last week, we have doubled the number of tests that we have done the week before, and that has been an ongoing increase. One has to consider the approach to testing as different from just the number of tests. And I don't think a lot of people are looking at the approach. They are just focusing on the number of tests. And we're fairly confident that the tests that we have done and the results that we have gotten has given us a fairly accurate reflection as to what is happening on the ground. So, for example, the parishes of Hanover, Trelawney, and St. Thomas are Sorry? the only... I'm saying, for example, the parishes of Hanover, Trelawney, and St. Thomas are the only which are yet to record any confirmed case of COVID-19. Do you know whether there has been any tests in these parishes? There are tests that are done. Samples are collected from every parish, as far as I know. Every parish, and, and are tested. We continue to have conversations. Remember now, the samples are collected at the health centers or at the hospitals. Um, there's ongoing discussion around the, with the, the, the persons on the front line, the doctors, the nurses, those who are responsible for the test, for collecting the samples to, to increase. Because we have, the excess, we have the capacity, you know. It's not like we have exhausted the capacity and therefore need capacity to test more. We can test, I think, the last, number I saw, we can test probably up to 180 persons per day or 180 samples per day. And we are now putting in additional capacity at the public health lab, which will, I think, double or more that, that number. So it really is about collecting the samples and the protocol guide how the samples are collecting collected. This week, we're rolling out the mobile buses to collect, to, to, to go into town centers and to allow anybody who wants to be tested to come in. Of course, they have to be 
counseled and interviewed and so on, and then the test is, is the sample is taken. So we're we're moving. Uh, we're now discussing the antibody test and how that can be introduced. That's the the one that gives not so much a positive or a negative result, but whether or not the person who provides the sample has been exposed to the virus. So it picks up the, the, the that that signal. But we have to select the kit that is accurate and that is recommended by the by through through an appropriate level of interrogation. Not just any kit that is out there, and you know it, it 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 it's a lot more than what is viewed on the face of it. But again, I can appreciate the need for for persons to feel fearful, and as a result, latch on to the idea that we need to be testing everybody to um to determine whether or not we are overcoming the challenge. Um, we have to focus on the approach as much we do on the numbers.